Hi everyone! Welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today we have a fun art project from Mr. Melvin, an art teacher from Wisconsin. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia gallery. Hello artists and welcome to Mr. Melvin Makes. Today I'd like to make a drawing with you all involving these two toy insects. My drawing today is going to be a really good lesson in the following art concepts scale and proportion. Both of these terms have to do with the relative size of something within a work of art and how that affects your overall space and perception of that space as a viewer. Scale is the size of one object in relation to the size of another. For example, this fly is much larger than a regular fly would be in comparison to the size of my hand. That means that this toy is a large scale replica. Proportion has to do with the size of something in comparison to a whole, so a part of something to a whole. For example, this hand is not proportionate to my arm. This hand, however, is proportionate in terms of the size of the thumb and fingers to everything else. So if you compare it to my actual hand here, the proportion of the hand is right, but the scale is small. So that's the difference between scale and proportion. Let's learn a little bit more about scale and proportion and then we'll get started on today's drawing. All right, so before I get started on my drawing here, I just want to briefly talk a little bit about two artists that I think are really important in terms of scale and proportion and their work in the art community. The first is Klaus Oldenburg. Excuse me. Klaus Oldenburg is an artist that makes or designs these large-scale sculptures and puts them in kind of ordinary places. For example, you can see here a spoon um, in a really large scale compared to the overall size of this park. He does work a little bit with proportion there because the cherry is proportionate to the spoon. However, overall it is very large scale compared to these parks or this park. I really enjoy the ice cream cone. That's a perfect sort of scale representation on a summer day. Here comes Stella to take a look at these artists too. We've just got one more Stella, all right? The last I want to look at before we get started on our drawing today is Jeff Koons. Um, he's really well known for these balloon sculptures, which are, again, in a larger scale. Um, he also works a lot with textures, um, making something look like a balloon, even though it's not balloon material, just highly reflective. But um, I think this is another great artist to look at in terms of scale, where his balloon dog is a large scale comparison to anything um, any normal balloon dog that you would see. So Jeff Koons, Klaus Oldenburg, both great artists if you're interested in learning a little bit more about scale and proportion. Um, otherwise, if you just want to jump right into it, let's get started here with our bugs. All right, well, I shoo Stella away from my drawing area. Um, I just want to take a moment to talk about what we're going to need today for our drawings. And I also just want to take a moment to introduce myself and um, explain this channel a little bit, especially for those of you who uh, might not know who I am. My name is Mr. Melvin. Uh, I'm an art teacher in Verona, Wisconsin, and um, I'm really enjoying doing this project during the summer. It's keeping me busy, um, and I'm hoping to use these videos in my classroom. But anyway, today our drawing is um, really going to be a large-scale bug kind of invading or attacking. So one thing I'm going to need are um, bugs to reference, bugs to look at. Uh, if you don't have toy bugs like I do or insects, you could use a phone or a computer to look up another picture of one and then just draw from that picture. Um, I suppose you could go outside and try to collect one yourself, but good luck keeping it still. The other thing you're going to need today is a pencil and an eraser. I'm going to recommend a scrap or scratch sheet of paper for sketching and then just any drawing supplies you want. So I'm going to use my Sharpie for outline, and I haven't decided yet which coloring supply I want, but it'll be one of those three, or maybe a mix of all three. So that's what we need today to get started. Let's jump into it. Today's drawing is going to practice a skill known as observational drawing, or drawing from observation. That's just a fancy way of saying drawing what you see rather than what you know. Uh, so to practice this, I think it's a great idea to start with a scratch sheet or a scrap piece of paper just so you can get your idea out and practice sketching uh, what you're looking at. 
So you can see here I'm looking directly at my ant and I am really paying attention to the shapes. Um, and I'm using techniques like counting and considering proportions to make sure I draw it right. So you can see there I drew the body part, the center of the body, um, by counting three little ovals and then um, going from there. So this whole step is really just looking at what I see and trying my best to get it on the paper. This is a skill that is really mastered over time and through experience. So a project like this is a great way to um, allow yourself to have some of that experience to get better at observational drawing. Uh, you can see here that I can just simply count six legs and draw those all willy-nilly, but um, I want to really reference my drawing, or rather my toy. So I'm looking at it. I'm really paying attention to how the legs bend, which direction they're moving, uh, looking at the tips of the legs and noticing that they aren't just a point, they're actually kind of three ovals connected to each other. So all of that kind of stuff, really looking at what you're making is so important when you're making a drawing like this. You'll see me um, kind of sped up drawing the fly next and then um, just a little technique I use to get my sketch onto my final drawing paper. Alright, so now that I've got my drawing all outlined with Sharpie, I'm actually able to trace that directly onto my drawing paper. You could do this at home if your drawing paper is thin enough to see through. If it isn't, you could use a window so that the light from the window will shine through and show your drawing underneath, or you could use a tracing table. If you're a little crunched from time, rather than drawing your bug on a scrap sheet of paper, you could always just do that directly on your drawing paper. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you need to erase, you'll be erasing on your drawing paper, which can kind of get messy over time. Next, you just want to think about a creative background for your large-scale insects. If you're following along today, my challenge for you is to draw a bug or insect, or you know what, really anything that's tiny, in a really large scale so that it looks like it's almost attacking or invading a kind of regular area. I chose to have my bugs kind of invading this park and in a second here you're going to see just one little um, detail I'm going to add to make this a little bit more personal and fun. Hey, look at that guy. Now I've got myself added into my picture, and if I'm being honest with you, uh, it's not a lie to say that bugs kind of freak me out. Nothing like walking through the woods and feeling a bug crawling on you. Ooh, creepy crawlers. Well, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and finish my drawing using colored pencils. I've used colored pencils and marker today just to have a variety of art media on my drawing, um, and I think that's going to create a really cool effect. Just like before, I always add um, a dark and a light color to show some shading. And I'm just going to keep working on my drawing, making sure that I'm showing my absolute best in the time I'm allowing myself to work on this.
just about done with this picture here, and I gotta say I am really proud of how it's looking. I've got a little bit more time, so I am just showing some um, value by adding shadows from the trees. I think this is a really easy way to show the viewers of your artwork that you're willing to work hard to make the space of your drawing more dynamic and more believable. Um, I want my viewers to almost feel like they could walk into this picture. As I finish up my drawing by adding some warmth to the foreground with this yellow green, I just want to give you a sincere thank you for checking out my channel today. If you liked this video, please subscribe and check out my other art activities. If you know someone who you think would like Mr. Melvin Makes, please share my channel with them too. You can always connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, find the links in the description below. And anyway, just thank you again and happy making, artist. Happy making.